Next on Worcester News Tonight, closing arguments in the trial of a Princeton man accused of killing his wife. Plus, St. John's High School in Shrewsbury announcing a new principal after a nationwide search. We'll hear from the headmaster. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Katherine Andrioli. The girlfriend of the man who shot and killed Auburn police officer Ronald Tarantino has been arrested. Worcester police say they had a search warrant for 35-year-old Heather Phillips' apartment. Police entered the Suffield Street address on Thursday. Phillip and 35-year-old Gino Fiola were inside. Fiola had a bag of cocaine. When police tried to place him under arrest, a struggle ensued. When he saw police, he took a bag of cocaine out of his pocket, ripped it open and attempted to discard the contents of the bag onto the floor. Police approached and as they did, he dropped the bag on the floor by his feet. He then struggled with officers as they attempted to place him in handcuffs. He attempted to pull away uh, to flee. Eventually, three officers were able to handcuff Fiola. Police searched the apartment and found Phillips' eight-year-old son in a bedroom, along with cocaine and heroin in the apartment. The child is now in the custody of the Department of Children and Families. The jury is deliberating in the manslaughter trial for Roger Desolets Jr. He's the Princeton dentist accused of pushing his wife out a third-story window. Alicia Palumbo reports. She took a beating in that hallway from this defendant. Did Kathleen Desolitz jump or fall to her death out of the third story window of the Princeton home she shared with her husband, or did he push her out of it? That's the question a jury of six men and six women are trying to decide in the 2011 manslaughter trial of Princeton dentist Dr. Roger Desolitz. Why didn't they find glass particulates in her hair? Why didn't they find those cuts? Because she didn't get pushed through a window. She jumped or fell from that perch. In closing arguments Friday, both the defense and prosecution agreed that the couple, whom had been married 44 years, were on rocky terms after Kathleen found out Roger had been having an affair for 20 years. But each side scoffed at the other's version of how the window was broken and how Kathleen Desolates ended up outside naked and dying. Think about whether it makes any sense that Kathy Desolates would take off her robe, smash a window, then carefully climb into the windowsill, sit down, and plunge 30 feet to her death. You have to believe that Dr. Desolette, in the middle of an armed struggle, opened up this window before throwing his wife through the other window. And the jury will continue deliberating on Monday. St. John's High School in Shrewsbury has hired a new principal after a nationwide search. The school has appointed Margaret Rourke Granados as the new principal. She is the first woman to hold the position at the All Boys High School. Headmaster Alex Zakara says after an extensive search, they are thrilled to appoint Granados as the principal. Yeah, I think we'll bring a wonderful perspective, uh, a different perspective to St. John's. Uh, she's somebody who's very much grounded in her faith. Uh, she's going to be a great role model for our students um, and really be a great, a great service uh, to our uh, Catholic and Zavarian values here at St. John's. And Granados is an alumni of the College of the Holy Cross. She will begin her term as principal in the fall of 2017. Skiers and snowboarders hit the slopes in Shrewsbury tonight for the annual Rail Jam at Ski Ward. The ski area organized a competition for skiers and snowboarders to slide down rails similar to the ones in X Games. Uh, excuse me, winter events. As you can see, many were showing off their skills in the snow. Event coordinators say this is a great way to bring friendly competition to Ski Ward and bring people together. We put together a Rail Jam session so a bunch of the kids can come out, have fun contribute towards the park. Snowboarding started in the East Coast and we're going to keep it here with events like this. And we have a whole bunch of other um, material prizes like hats, t-shirts and stuff like that to give out to everybody else. Everyone's going to walk home with something. That's what's good about this event. The president of a Worcester company is facing disturbing allegations. He's charged with a hate crime following an incident at JFK Airport in New York City. Jeff Sapperstone has the details. Disturbing hate crime inside JFK Airport in New York. Prosecutors say a Worcester man, 57-year-old Robin Rhodes, assaulted and harassed a Muslim woman working inside the Delta Airlines lounge. That woman, Rabia Khan, wearing a headscarf, was sitting inside her office when prosecutors say Rhodes came up to the door and asked, are you expletive sleeping? Are you praying? What are you doing? 
Then they say he punched the door, which hit her chair, and Khan then asked him what she did. He allegedly said, you did nothing, but I am going to kick your expletive. Prosecutors then say he kicked Khan's leg and then tried to block her from leaving the office at one point saying, expletive Islam, expletive ISIS, Trump is here now. He will get rid of all of you. You can ask Germany, Belgium, and France about these kind of people. You will see what happens. Jeff Saperstone for Worcester News Tonight. Students from Nichols College made the trek to Washington, D.C. and were in the Capitol for President Trump's inauguration. The students say it was a historic day and the experience is one they won't forget. A Rosalind Flaherty caught up with the students and has more. I didn't really know what to expect going into it. Dozens of students from Nichols College are back after spending two weeks in Washington, D.C. The final part of their trip was attending the inauguration of President Donald Trump. I would say I got more out of those two weeks than I did out of inauguration day itself. Senior Alexandra Voitilla says she was expecting to be overwhelmed with emotion at the inauguration. I was expecting to feel patriotic, to feel happy, to feel celebration. Um, and I didn't. Junior Timothy Bourne says he had no expectations going into the trip, but was also disappointed with Inauguration Day. He left hours before President Trump took the oath of office. I heard some things that I didn't agree with at all, and um, my fundamental ideology of how I view our country and our world was just being completely ripped apart, basically. But senior Michael Cotrere says witnessing the transition of power was very powerful. That was kind of when it set in that. You know, it was his country now. Cotrere says whether or not he supported President Trump didn't matter to him on that day. Outside the gates where there's people like literally face up against it, like rusted, probably 100 year old gates up against the pressing against each other, trying to see uh, see the president was it was just amazing to see. During their trip, the students had a jam packed itinerary with a mix of academic programming and site visits. I knew there was going to be a little bit of work involved, but it turned out to be an absolutely fantastic educational experience. And despite their differing opinions on the inauguration, the students can agree what they learned over the two weeks was life changing. I feel much more of like a well rounded citizen now that I am well informed on what's going on in our world and what the issues are. Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. A two-alarm fire in Worcester Friday night forces residents out of their homes. The Worcester Fire Department says the call came in around 4.30, but the fire may have started earlier. District Fire Chief Edward Thomas says it appears the fire may have started in the living room of the first floor. He says no one was home at the time and no firefighters were injured. They uh, made entrance to the uh, front side but were um, inhibited because of a floor, hole in the floor due to a fire that was smoldering for a long time. We think it was in the living room. So that slowed us down a little bit, which caused us to have a second alarm to uh, get the manpower here to bring more lines and more personnel to the back of the building to make the attack from that side. The cause of the fire is still under